a monthly time step animation of nuclear explosions with breaks to map discussion, photos, and videos at test pauses. Part 2, 1960 to 1993. This is where we left off in part 1. Returning to the time step animation, note the higher tone used for countries as we move down the list. When multiple countries test the same month, the tone denotes the highest yield. Action starts in North Africa, then the superpowers will take off, and others enter. Other than a single Chinese test, there was finally a pause of testing in 1993 with negotiations moving into the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, following the 1959-60 moratorium. Mainland American testing resumed at the Nevada test site with Nugget, a first entirely underground series, primarily for weapons development, but also included Nome in New Mexico to explore peaceful applications of nuclear explosions. The last atmospheric tests in Nevada were part of Sunbeam, with the development of new tactical weapons notably including the Davy Crockett gun firing system. Storax, the next test, included Sedan, a shallow underground test to investigate the use of these weapons for mining, cratering, and other civilian purposes. But a crate had followed that may have contaminated more U.S. residents than any other nuclear test. Then in Nevada was Roller Coaster and Niblick. Whetstone, with 55 Nevada tests, and one in Mississippi, to develop seismic methods for detecting underground tests. Oddly, video clips for this test are of a cow walking over top. Flintlock included a first Aleutian Island test for ongoing seismic detection research. Then Latchkey and Crosstie. Many of these tests, I should mention, continue to be dual purpose, developing weapons and, to a lesser degree, continuing to explore peaceful applications. Then was Bowline, which included more excavation experiments. This was followed by Mandrill and then Emery. Gromit with 33 Nevada tests and another in Alaska, which is notable as being the largest yield underground test by the US at almost five megatons, causing up to 20 feet of ground lift. Then Toggle, 28 tests, all in Nevada here and going forward. I should mention that for the previous 10 years and going forward, all of these tests have been underground as per the partial test ban treaty between the main nuclear powers. Next series were Arbor, Bedrock, Anvil, just weapons related research from here on as peaceful applications were abandoned. Then Fulcrum, Crescent, and Quicksilver. Should mention that many of these series from 62 to 91 included joint testing with the British. Then Tinderbox, Guardian, and they just keep on going. Finally, Julian, the last US test series cut off with the treaty negotiations, with the last U.S. test being Divider on September 23rd of 1992. And early in the same period, the last test series took place at the Pacific Proving Grounds. Named Dominic, mostly comprising B-52 airdrops, it was one of the largest U.S. weapons testing programs conducted for total yield. It also notably included Frigate Bird, the only fully operational submarine-launched ballistic missile test with a live warhead, and the rocket-based fishbowl series of high-altitude tests, including Starfish Prime, the largest nuclear detonation in space. The Soviets largely kept pace with extensive testing over the same period. A large number of tests, 
over 50 carried out in 1961. One of these tests was a monster called Tsar Bomba. On October 30th of 61, a specially modified Russian bear, or Tu-95 bomber, took off from a military place in far northwest Russia, carrying the massive 27-ton bomb and accompanied by an instrumentation aircraft. Both planes were painted with a special reflective paint to reduce heat damage. To carry this payload, the bomber required extensive redesigns, including to its engines, suspension, and bomb bay. The bomb was fastened externally beneath the bomber by a special heavy holder, connecting it directly to the weight-bearing beams of the aircraft. The bomb was engineered down from initial 100 megaton design and was fitted with a huge parachute to slow its descent, providing the bomber with a chance of survival estimated at 50%. Two hours after takeoff, the bomb was released from high above Novaya Zemlya, the large Arctic island comprising Russia's northern test site. When the shock wave caught the Tu-95, it fell thousands of feet in altitude, but the skilled aviators managed to regain control and safely return it to base, despite also receiving heat and radiation damage to expose parts of the airframe. Infamously, the blast shattered windows up to 500 miles away. Flaring was reported, observed as far away as Norway, Greenland, and Alaska. The mushroom cloud rose to a height over seven times the height of Mount Everest, and an atmospheric pressure wave was observed circling the globe three times, thousands of times greater than the atom bombs dropped on Japan at 50 megatons this was the single most physically powerful human device ever unleashed. Nineteen sixty one sixty two Project K comprised high altitude missile tests over a populated region, causing electromagnetic pulse impacts, with the K three test infamously disabling a regional grid, including destruction of an electrical power plant. USSR testing peaked in nineteen sixty two in terms of count and yield with a large number of tests in the multi-megaton range, including Test 219, a massive ICBM-delivered H-bomb, with a yield of 24.4 megatons, the second most powerful bomb ever tested. No tests in 63, after which Soviet testing shifted underground, as per the Partial Test Ban Treaty. The Soviets also pursued other applications of nuclear blasts. One example was the 1965 Chagan excavation experiment, the resulting crater formed a deep circular lake, and the crater rim dammed a valley bottom near the confluence of two rivers, forming an even larger lake. Radioactive products from the test escaped the region and were detected as far away as Japan. Soviet testing continued for another quarter century, primarily for weapons development, mostly at Kazakhstan and Arctic test sites, although the Soviets dispersed their testing to a larger degree across the continent. These tests were part of the Cold War nuclear arms race, reflecting their intense competition with the U.S. with the last Soviet test on October 24th of 1990. British nuclear testing during this period was integrated with the U.S. testing, with all remaining British tests conducted within the American Nevada test site series. After the American Soviets and British, France became the fourth nuclear armed state, with its first test series in Algeria, 1960-61. The very first French test was larger than the three previous nuclear armed state first tests combined, at 70 kilotons. The second series, at another Algerian location, included the barrel test incident. Despite being underground, improper sealing of the shaft causes radioactive debris to be released into the atmosphere, exposing some French soldiers to heavy contamination. All remaining French tests, close to 200 in number, were carried out in the South Pacific. This was a broad testing regime, which included variably sized tactical nukes, near megaton designs, and large multi-megaton two-stage H-bomb. Some of those tests, among certain others, have been widely criticized for contamination impacts on the South Pacific islands of the area. China also became a nuclear power during this period, with its first fission device test in 1964 at 22 kilotons. China rapidly advanced to deployable H-bombs, with test number six in 67 being a full-yield multi-stage bomb at 3.3 megatons. China's largest test occurred in 76, another bomber airdrop with a yield of about 4 megatons. And India joined this nuclear club in 1974. Smiling Buddha, underground test, yield at about 8 kilotons. On this map, for the period of 1960 to 93, many test points overlap. To visualize, overlapping points are here dispersed on an X pattern, highlighting the extraordinary amount of testing at the primary American and Russian test sites and the considerable 
Constria testing by the French and Chinese. Check out the final part for this, which I'll get out soon. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, or watch more Geography Viz.